The Prophet ﷺ had a very interesting experience. He started to see dreams at night. Started to have dreams at night. And what would happen is the next day, the dream would come true. Like whatever he saw in his dream would occur in the next day. And then, so the first time you're like, okay. Then the second time, third time, fourth time. And it became a daily event. So much so that he just expected it. And that was to get him to just kind of trust his heart. To be comfortable with having knowledge. With being given knowledge that was not available. Was not possible to be attained anywhere else. And once that started to happen, then he really started to reflect and deep think uh, very you know think very deeply and that's when the Prophet ﷺ decided I need to kind of get some time away I need some time to reflect I need some time to just invest into just some deep thought deep reflection get away from the noise and that's when he tells his wife and he's been telling her I have these dreams and whatever I see comes true the next day and she tells him don't worry just trust your heart everything has a purpose and a reason and she says it's all good it's all for a purpose just trust what's going on then he comes to her and tells her I need some time to reflect to think I need to get away for a little bit and she says absolutely how long do you need to go for at least a couple of days I'm gonna go find a nice spot in the mountains not too far away but I need a secluded nice spot where I can go and I can reflect she packs him together some food some supplies some clothes and sends him out very lovingly and the Prophet ﷺ goes outside of Mecca finds a mountain by the name of Nur Jabal Nur and there he finds a small cave by the name of Hira Ghar Hira and he actually chose that spot because when he sat at the mouth of the cave he could see the Kaaba from there and he sits down and he begins to meditate and reflect and pray and think over here and he would be gone for a few days at a time and he would come back down and go back home spend a few weeks at home a month or so at home then pack up some stuff and then go again and this way he would kind of come and go take a few days here and there one time it mentions that he was gone and Khadija helped him pack the stuff that he was taking so she knew exactly how much food he had and when they go when he goes she realizes that he's been gone longer than what he had food for so she packed some food and some supplies together and she actually goes outside of Mecca and climbs up the mountain and the Prophet ﷺ is sitting at the opening of the cave and he sees her and he says what are you doing here and she says I got worried about you I want to make sure that you were okay I brought some food for you so this is what their relationship was like one of understanding and facilitating and providing and accommodating one another so we know of that blessed day when the Prophet ﷺ receives divine revelation and so now the Prophet ﷺ comes back down from the cave and he comes home and he's shaking and trembling overwhelmed by this profound experience unlike anything any a human being has ever experienced there, has been, there have been many a messenger and prophet before him but he just received the Quran most powerful experience any human being ever had so he's overwhelmed shaking and trembling and he comes home and he tells his beloved wife Khadija radiallahu anha dathiruni dathiruni zambiluni zambiluni cover me wrap me up in a blanket in a shawl Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha wraps him up and covers him up and then she asks him that tell me what happened tell me what happened and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa tells her the entire experience that this angel he came to me and he said the following words to me and he recites the Quran to her and tells him of the divine responsibility that has been placed on his shoulder Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha the wife of the Prophet sallallahu and we see what marriage what it really culminates she sits down next to him she takes his hand she looks him in the eye and this is what she says to him this is how she defined 15 years of marriage 6 children later the death of 2 of those children everything they've been through listen to what she has to say this is her summary of her husband this is how she explains and defines him she says Kalla wallahi. there's absolutely nothing to worry about I swear to God La Allahu abada. God will never ruin you he will never abandon you why am I so confident in saying this what do I know about you after 15 years of sharing morning and evening day and night after sharing a life with you what can I say about you innaka la tasilur rahim innaka la tasilur rahim you're a good family man you take care of your family you love your family wa tuqri wa taqri abdayf you honor your guest somebody shows up at your doorstep you go above and beyond any type of social obligation to honor somebody who comes at your door you look for people you look for people you go out searching for people who have fallen through the cracks who are overlooked and neglected and downtrodden by society and you go and you grab them by the hand and lift them back up you go and give to those people who can't you take care of those people who can't take care of themselves you look for those people and you are always the first one waiting there whenever there's a good cause that's who you are there's no way that God would ever abandon you that God would ever forsake you I refuse to believe it think about the conviction she has what is her husband telling her and think about his honesty and his character and his integrity and his nobility that she would literally she would follow him to the moon she would trust him no matter what and that she said that I have no doubts about the fact that this is the truth and that this is good because this is who you are and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells her that's fine 
saying, but who believed this message? And she says, I believe this message. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna ka rasulullah.